right, it's Thursday again, and weeks are going really, really quickly now, aren't they? Uh, hope everyone's all right. I've seen some of you out on the bank last week, and it was great to see you. I just got back from Boston. I've been down there with Joe Carras from Match Fishing Magazine, and it's been lovely. Simply lovely, as Joe would say. Um, I've been asked to do a feature down there, which is what we've been doing today for Match Fishing Magazine, of course. And that's really just been to outline my skimmer approach on that sort of a venue at this time of year cracking session it's been brilliant you know and as a lot of people know I do one or two things a little bit different from other people I'm not saying it's better it's just different um, and while ever I'm getting a few results doing it I'll continue to do that so some of you might be interested to read that uh, I'm not sure what month that's going to be it could be next month or the month after I'm not too sure but I will find out and let you know nearer the time so it's been a great session I've used the old Special G Dark today. I've used it in uh, two or three different variations, so that might be something else that one or two people are, you know, you might be interested in seeing. Because obviously, with ground baits, there's more than one way to use them and more than one way to mix them. So, like I say, even if it's not something you're interested in, um, as regards, you know, using for yourself in your own approach to skimmer fishing, it might just be an interesting read and just food for thought or just a talking point. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's been a great day. It's, it's getting a bit late now, so I've no footage from that from today, but that will be in next week's video. Um, so yeah, so you see some of that. Uh, I think I've got about six questions to cover now, but there's an another six that I'm not going to cover. So what I'm going to do is, like I said before, I'm going to start doing um, a video just on Q&As. I'll do it each week, and I think I'm going to be doing it, well I am going to be doing it. That is certain now, made my mind up. I'm going to be doing it Sunday evening at half past six. So that'll just be Q&As. So please keep the questions coming in, either put them on the comments underneath this video or send them me through email or Facebook whatever uh, so I've got six for tonight for you so I'm going to do them first and then I'm just going to finish off with just kind of what I've been up to this week and, and just what I've seen and what's taking my, my interest uh, this week so the first question is it's all about fishery rules somebody's asked me what my opinion is on fishery rules the one thing I don't want to do with this channel is, is kind of get political with it. I don't want to go down that avenue because that can start debates and, and you know, it can get a bit too a bit too serious and in-depth. And, you know, I'm only doing this for, you know, to to, to enjoy my fishing even more and, and, and just kind of deliver the stuff that I know, not just all about my opinions and stuff. As regards fishery rules, what I can say is I understand why certain fishes have bans on certain things. I completely understand. I also haven't got a clue why some fisheries ban other things and I think that's where the confusion lies sometimes if you don't know the reason why something's banned or a method's banned if you don't know why then I can understand why people get upset about it but the bottom line for me is these people are you know it's their business it's their livelihood we are visiting their commercial fishery for example or their fishery and it's their property it's their land and you've got to abide by their rules whatever they are you've just got to do it credit to massive amount of uh, of the fisheries out there the bands and the rules are there in black and white for people to read even before they go you can find out on the internet what they are if you don't like them or you don't want to fish that way just don't go there are hundreds of fisheries out there if not thousands you know there are plenty to choose from and if you're going to go there you've just got to respect them and to be honest from a match angler's point of view by eliminating a lot of methods and tactics and baits it's kind of helping us out you know because if somebody's catching at the next peg or the other side of the lake and you're not instead of having an infinite amount of options available of where you're going wrong it actually is narrowing the selection down for you so it's actually helping you out a little bit so as long as it's a level playing field I'm not too I'm not bothered about that you know what the rules are and it, it, and if you know there's one or two fish out there that I don't like for whatever reasons or I don't feel comfortable there or whatever I just don't go to them simple as that so that was the one on fishery rules so the next question was method or cage I love fishing the method, I absolutely adore fishing the method because once it's set right, the fish are self-hooking, there's nothing simpler and more often than not, when you do catch a fish on the method, you've got decent gear on as well, the fish is hooked, it's, it's a great way of fishing, I love it, I'll be you know fishing it a lot more this year because I'm, I'm finding with the method you're catching on a lot more variety of venues, what I realise you could actually catch on it, so I love the method but I also love the cage, they've both got the benefits on certain days and let's be honest about it, whilst I might start off on a cage sometimes I'll always have a method rod set up as well simple as that and vice versa because the key to the cage for me is the length of the tail that you use with it and because you've got a length of tail whatever you decide that's going to be that is where if, if the fish are in that much that, that far off the bottom for example if they sat there you, you couldn't potentially go past all those fish with the method unless they follow it down you know and because the bait is buried inside uh, the pellets or the ground bait that you've got with a method feeder unless the, the fish is going to stick its mouth into that 
you're not going to catch it, simple as that. So there are days when fish don't want to do that, they want to feed either away from the feeder or they're simply higher up in the water. One key thing I can tell you is in the Barstow Masters final last year I won my section, 20 odd pound wherever it was, all skimmers and I actually caught them on a method feeder but by leaving the hook length out and I think I'm not, I'm not sure of the exact number of fish I had, I think I had about 16 fish and I think something like 14 of them were instant. As soon as that feeder hit the deck and I put my rod down, the rod went round. So basically what was happening was they must have just been seeing the plop of the feeder that was going down and because when they've come into it they've immediately seen my hook bait which was maggot, dead maggot, they've just taken that. Because it was just ground bait around there, there was no other loose, loose offerings there um, but I'd fished prior to that with a normal normal method feeder in the conventional way and I never had a sign, never had a sign so the fish obviously didn't want to stick their mouth into that ground bait but by leaving that hook length out it obviously gave them a plop, it's shallow water anyway at Boston as a lot of you know it's shallow water, it gives them a plop, they see the ground bait on the feeder go down to the deck if they do see it, they see one little maggot stuck there and that's how I caught them, won the section, yeah it didn't win the match obviously but it won the section, 100 quid brilliant and all the people who sat around me sat with a method feeder just sat there biteless so the answer to that question is you never really know until the day simple as that a lot of the time and it's happening more and more now I'll have both set up but just because you never know until you get to the session the next question was about casting times again I have you know when you cast your feeder out when you cast out I time my casts to start with I don't do that for the full match on some matches but you've got to have a starting point the only way you can monitor what's happening in your peg is by monitoring it in some kind of way there's different ways of doing it there's ways of doing it with pole fishing or waggler fishing or whatever but with feeder fishing I like to give myself a set time so I, so for example this time of year I might start off having five minute casts nice benchmark five minute casts and if I'm catching quicker than that then you know, if I'm getting bites within the first minute, two minutes, then you might want to increase that. If you're not catching after 20 minutes or so, then start leaving it longer. Leave it six, seven, eight, nine minutes, even 10 minutes, sometimes longer. You never really know until the day, but the reason why I start off doing it is because you've got a definite benchmark. You've got a definite marker of how long it's taking you to get bites or not get bites. It's, and then it just gives you something to work with. You can either start leaving it in longer or you can leave it in shorter. Sometimes you might leave it in five minutes and not get a bite. But if you increase to two minute casts, you'll start getting bites, which tells you straight away that they want that little bit of activity. You know, but by timing your casts, that's the only way you can know that because sometimes, especially this time of year, if you sat waiting 15 minutes for a bite, to be honest, sometimes that feels like 45 minutes. You, can, you know, so, but by the stopwatch or whatever and timing it, it just gives you a start, that's all. Um, so again, that is something that you can, you've just got to have a starting point for each match and then regulate it through the session. Next question, how many lines do you fish? Again, it depends on the venue, it depends on the target species, it, it, it depends, there's so many variables in that. I'm a big believer in keeping things simple, especially this time of year. This time of year I will often just fish one line because places like Southfield I like to do it and it's something I've done in the past and had success doing it, but the more, the more, you know, the more I fish those sorts of venues now and as I'm getting older and more experienced, I'm kind of finding that it's not necessarily the right thing to do. Um, on a lot of occasions purely because you see in my head I hate splitting the feed up I hate, hate having two or three different areas of feed on hard venues I like to think that I'm on one line so the fish turn up I'm actually on that line when they turn up on that bait obviously with multiple swims you could be on a, on a fish in a shorter line for example when the only visit you're going to get from, from feeding fish on your longer line is while you're on the short line so you're going to miss that opportunity that window so the main reason why I fish more than one line on most occasions now is purely to rest the swim you know by banging a feeder in all the time on one line it, it, you know sometimes fish want that but sometimes they don't sometimes they, they need a period where it's going to be quiet so they've got time to come over the over the feed and settle and that's when a second line can come into play it's an experience thing and it's something that um, you know there will always be venues there I'll always fish one line but there are some venues where I'll always fish two or even three all I can say is I just try and keep it as simple as I can and that, and that goes for the, the, the bait that I'm feeding as well so that's maybe so it's, it's a big in-depth question that one I probably could do a video on that on its own just to cover the options there's no single answer as anything but it's down to confidence at the end of the day next question was how do you decide on what hook length length to start off with again it's like timing your cast you've got to have a start you've got to have a starting point for me on most of the venues that I fish now whether it be a commercial or a or a natural 
um, natural venue I'll start on 50 centimeters if you're not getting bites lengthen it and if you're getting bites and not seeing them or you're missing bites reduce it and it really is that simple there's never going to be one set answer obviously if you're missing bites and stuff it can be other reasons like you, the way that your tip set and um, the weight of the feeder even your rig your size of your hook the hook bait you know but that's one aspect that you can physically change um, and you know on most occasions I've found to be fair that that is the one that solves the problem of missing bites or even just not getting bites especially on, ri on rivers for example you could end up with a, a tail that's two or three meters long you know so that's why we carry a selection of hook lengths ready made up in, a, in, our, in our kit different lengths that's exactly why so that can, we can quickly change and try and find some fish and the last question was fluorocarbon right I'm going to openly admit that I haven't had chance to fish enough to get experience and confidence in using fluorocarbon I understand 100% why anglers use it and I know that some of the very best anglers in, in Europe and if not the world are using fluorocarbon now because I've asked them directly and they've told me and I completely understand why they use it the reason why I haven't used it is because every single match I fish now, I don't fish, you know, a Saturday and Sunday knock-up kind of thing. Every match I fish now, I just kind of concentrate on the ones that mean a massive amount to me and the important matches. They're not matches where I really want to be experimenting with different lines and different hooks, you know, because I want to be fishing with kit that I'm 100% confident in. i got confidence in. And fluorocarbon, I know why people use it, because of the stiffness and it, it sticks the, um, it lays on the bottom out of the way. I understand that and over the coming weeks I will be trying it and, and just to, you know seeing what I think of it basically um, I'm you know but that's my honest answer if I had a chance to spend a bit more time on the bank trying stuff out then I'd certainly do it but I just haven't had the opportunity so as soon as I do I'll let everybody know what I think to it thanks for all the questions it's been brilliant like I said I've got some more so I'll put those on on Sunday night half past six so let's just have a quick look at what I've been up to this week Right, as you know, I've been to Boston today, and um, like I say, it's, it's getting on a little bit now, so uh, I've got work tomorrow, which is Friday, obviously, and then that's it, I'm off then, I'm off down to Larford on Sunday, I've got Saturday just to prep my gear, I've been prepping all week, just doing bits and bobs, not manic, because I, I, I don't honestly believe I'll need a wide range of kit for next week, so it's been all about prep, and I've had quite a few questions about prep as well, so I don't want to just blast it at you, rush it now, I, I'll do a, a video just on prep, you know, I don't do anything special, I just keep everything nice and simple, organised, around my job obviously, and um, like I say, I know some lads don't really go away for those sorts of trips for four or five days at a time, and I know some of you are interested to see how we, you know, prepare his kit and and manage his bait and that sort of stuff. So, so that's it. So I will bring that video to you. I haven't forgot. So yeah, I've been prepping all week. As regards next week, I've had loads of feedback as regards what you want to see as regards a video, and I thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. What I'm going to do, I've had to make a decision. I'm going to do one long video for the festival next week, but. What I am going to try is, I'm going to try and upload a three minute um, summary of the day, each day. Now, the only thing that's going to stop me doing this, I've certainly got the kit to do it, and I'll have the time to do it, because I should be back at the digs, you know, before six each evening. The only thing that's going to stop me doing it is the upload speed in the digs where I'm staying. Now, it's 125 miles away, so I can't just have to go down there and test it. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my kit with me. I'll be filming anyway for the for the hour long video that I'm going to do of the full competition but I'm going to try and do an upload um, it's probably going to be later in the evening it might be even be half past 8, 9 o'clock something like that by the time it gets on there but I'm going to try it alright so I'm going to experiment with it on Sunday evening um, so please if you're subscribers please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber because if it is going to happen I'm going to put a video on and all you subscribers will get um, an email or a notification telling you that there's a video there and if it does work the first evening then that's great each evening you're gonna be able to look at a video and just have a three minute summary from myself or one of the winners or or whatever but just a three minute summary so you can see what's happening through the week I'd love to do it I want to do it um, like I say it'll only be three minutes long there won't be any live match footage it'll just be a quick chat and summary of the match so I'm gonna try that so watch out for that from Sunday evening so if you haven't subscribed it's free so just subscribe and you'll get a notification if that's going to happen. So I will do my best for you, but like I say, it's just down to upload speed. I don't know what the internet connection is like where I'm going, so, so that's that one. And just to finish off, Feeder Masters Super League 
firstly it's been great to see what Lee Kerry and um, I don't know if it's Darren uh, and Mick Viles have been sending out the tickets for the Feeder Masters competitions. fantastic to see them coming through you know it's getting closer now so I'm really looking forward to that campaign like I said I've got plenty of tickets so hopefully um, I'm not, I might, may need a bit of luck along the way but with you know a number of tickets then hopefully that'll give me that um, but yeah Feeder Masters Super League like I said they've announced it today if you haven't done already, if you are interested in this, there is a Feeder Masters page on Facebook. Just like it and that will keep you in the loop with all notifications. I think there's 15 teams in it, 15 teams of four. And they've announced the uh, name of the teams and the team captains. And straight away, looking down that list, I won't go into it now because I know a lot of you have seen it anyway. If not, just go to the page on Facebook and it gives you the team captain underneath each, t each um, name of, of the actual team. It's brilliant. I love that because you see the name of the manager and then we're kind of guessing what the rest of the team is, you know, and uh, it'll be interesting. I think they, they will announce the teams, but um, but no, I hope my team don't mind me mentioning it. I'll tell you who they are. Our captain, Wayne Bartholomew, Big Bart from Sheffield, um, brilliant feeder angler. Used to fish for Barnsley, a lot of you know him anyway. Fantastic. He's running our team. Um, there's obviously myself. We've also got um, Gareth Lambert, young Gareth, a lot of you know Gareth anyway, fantastic skimmer, bream angler, does really well on, on the northern match circuit, he's a very natural attacking angler, when it when it's that sort of fishing he's very very hard to beat at that, you know, he's a very confident angler as well, um, and then we've got mad Steve Whitfield from Sheffield, a lot of you know Steve, he's been in a, a couple of the Riverfest finals, He's a brilliant all-rounder, he really loves his float fishing, whip fishing as well and fishing on rivers as well as obviously his feeder fishing, he's a great all-rounder and you know I, I know I'm sticking my neck out a little bit but I honestly think it's a really really um, good team of all-round anglers, obviously it's a four-round match series on four different venues so I think having that little bit of spread of, of knowledge between us I think it's I think it's a really good team so looking forward to that like I say that's going to kick off soon but I'll keep you in the loop with all that um, but that's about it I'm going to have to dash I've got to go listen what I'm going to do is thanks again for watching really appreciate it I've got loads to come for you like I say if you haven't subscribed already it's free please click subscribe and it'll keep you in the loop with everything there are going to be more uploads from next week I'm hoping there's going to be at least three a week now because I know what I'm doing I know what you guys want and you're telling me what you want so I can upload them quickly easily and let's just build a channel let's get it up and running you know uh, have a great weekend everybody I'm sorry if I'm racing through all this I'm talking really really quick I know we've got quite a few viewers over in Germany and Holland and Belgium and uh, Poland hi everybody um, thanks again for watching really appreciate it and I can't wait to see you all next week and I'm seeing some of you at the, on the festival next week so have a fantastic weekend I hope you catch loads of fish and that weather um, gets a little bit milder as I think it's going to so hopefully there'll be some good catches to report so have a great weekend and thanks again for watching